Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Brazilian fish stew. That's right, I'm very excited to show you my twist on Brazilian fish stew, or as people that actually know how to make this would call it, moqueca. And while it is true this is usually made with an array of seafood, I'm going to show you what I refer to as the weeknight version, featuring just one fish and a slightly simplified technique. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And as far as prep goes, it's really not too bad. To get rolling, we're going to need to mince some garlic, as well as slice up some onions and some peppers. And for this, I like to go with a combination of sweet and hot. So I have some baby bell peppers as well as some jalapeno. And what we're going to want to do first here is saute our onions over medium heat and a little bit of olive oil, along with the usual nice big pinch of salt. And by the way, traditionally, this is done in a red palm oil, which environmentally speaking is very controversial. But that's not why I'm not using it. I just didn't have any. So I'm going to go with the olive oil. And all we're going to do here is cook these onions over medium heat until they just start to get soft. Okay, sometimes we caramelize the onions to make them a little sweeter. But here, because the base of our sauce is going to be coconut milk, we do not want these onions to sweeten up too much. So we will cook those over medium heat for three or four minutes or until they look something like this. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is go ahead and add in some tomato paste. And I should mention at this point that fresh diced tomatoes are often added. But as you know, you can't get a decent tomato in the middle of winter. So personally, I'm just going to go with a tomato paste. We can also go ahead and toss in our minced garlic, as well as our spices, which for me is going to be a spoon of paprika. I'm also going to toss in some ground cumin, as well as, of course, a shake of cayenne. And then what we're going to want to do here is stir all that together and continue cooking on medium heat for about three or four minutes so we can kind of wake up our spices as well as sort of caramelize that tomato a little bit. Okay, so this is mine about three or four minutes later. And you can see how we have a little bit of a fond forming on the bottom of the pan. Okay, so that's looking just about perfect right there. And then what we'll do once that's set is go ahead and pour in our coconut milk. And please, I beg you, do not use low-fat coconut milk. All right, first of all, coconut fat is really good for you. But above and beyond that, the taste and texture just won't be the same. And then I know it's not traditional, but I'm also going to add a little splash of soy sauce. And we'll go ahead and give that a stir. And then what's going to happen a couple minutes later, this mixture is going to start to bubble again. And once it does, we'll just give it a stir and let it simmer on medium for about five minutes. All right, we want to give that coconut milk a little bit of time to absorb all those flavors. And what I'm suggesting we do while we wait is go ahead and cut up our fish. And by the way, while your onions are cooking, you can use that time to slice up your peppers and cut a couple limes in half. But anyway, let's go ahead and take whatever boneless, skinless fish we're using, in my case, sea bass, and we're going to cut it into chunks, for me, about one inch by two inches, or something like that. Nobody's going to measure, and you can pick any size you want, but we do want to get those pretty close in size so they cook at the same rate. And one great thing about this technique is we don't have to worry about the size or shape of the pieces of fish. Okay, this center cut piece is way thicker than that tail piece I just cut up. But it doesn't matter because somehow, someway, you should figure out a way to break that down into similarly sized pieces. And besides trying to cut these evenly, as you're doing this, be sure to be on the lookout for bones. Okay, you are the J.R.R. Tolkien of making sure your guests aren't choking. So as you're cutting this, that's something to pay attention to. And by the way, speaking of choking, man, that was a good game. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and cut up our fish. At which point, assuming our sauce has simmered for five minutes, we can head back to the stove and we will crank our heat up to medium high and go ahead and toss in our sweet and hot peppers. And we will stir those in. And then in addition to the peppers, we will also toss in some chopped green onions. And yes, I could have just added those with the peppers and stirred this once. But you know what? These things happen. And it's best not to dwell. And then what we'll do to finish this is let that come back to a simmer. And as soon as that mixture is bubbling, we'll go ahead and transfer in our fish. And then we'll use a spoon or a spatula, or in my case, a spoonula, to make sure our pieces of fish are coated with sauce and evenly distributed. And once that's been accomplished, finishing this recipe is super simple. All we're going to do is cover it and let it continue to cook on medium high heat for about five minutes or until the fish starts to flake. So I uncovered mine to check about four minutes later. And as I gave it a stir, I could clearly feel and see that some of the smaller pieces were flaking apart. That means we're done and we can turn off the heat. So I generally stop when I see these smaller pieces start to flake. And of course, if checking with a spatula is not precise enough for you, feel free to double check with a fork. So I verified that my fish was cooked, as well as my peppers were nice and tender, but still firm enough to hold their shape. And I also snuck a little taste of that bass, which tasted amazing even though we haven't even done the final steps yet. So with the heat off, we're going to finish this by adding some salt, if it needs it, but it probably will. 
And then we will also at this point toss in some freshly chopped cilantro, which 10 to 12% of our audience was really hoping I wouldn't. And then last but not least, we will finish this off with some freshly squeezed lime juice. And basically as soon as we add that lime juice and carefully stir it in, our fish stew should be done. And please don't be too rough here. I mean, this is a stew, so small bite-sized pieces are fine. But having said that, I really don't think we want to break this up into a bunch of tiny little pieces. Okay, the last thing I want to have happen when I'm eating fish is that I forget I'm eating fish. So try to use a relatively light touch. And then once that's set, we will give it one final taste and adjust if necessary. Otherwise, if this is looking and tasting exactly how we want, we can go ahead and serve up, in my case, next to some steamed rice. And besides our hopefully perfectly cooked fish, we will also want to spoon over plenty of those onions and peppers. Not to mention plenty of our luscious sauce, which I think has one of the most gorgeous colors ever. And then I decided to finish that up with some chopped green onions, which I always regret because they always clump up and I have to break them apart and they're all sticky and annoying. But anyway, a short 10 minutes later, I finally had those green onion slices placed where I wanted. And finally, my take on a Brazilian fish stew is done. And as pretty as all this looks, I cannot think of a more delicious way to eat fish. Okay, by poaching the fish in the sauce, you are pretty much guaranteeing yourself moist, perfectly cooked fish. And then as far as the flavor goes, what a perfect combination of ingredients. Okay, as usual, that little bit of spiciness is working perfectly with that subtly sweet coconut milk, with everything being balanced perfectly with the acidity from the tomato paste and the lime juice. So considering the appearance and texture and taste, I could not have been more thrilled with how this came out. And if you don't eat fish, would this work with chicken? Well, unofficially, yes, it would work great. But officially, no, you should try it with the fish. Are you sure you don't like fish? Try it in this and see. So whether you're gonna make the simple version on a weeknight with just one kind of fish, or do a much fancier version on the weekend with like six or seven kinds of seafood, either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.